welcome to a Horus Heresy Battle Report brought to you by the Legion Wargaming. The Great Crusade rolls on under the direction of the newly appointed War Master. This planet is known to the Imperium as 50735, this being the 35th world brought to compliance by the 507th Expeditionary Fleet. Finding the world verdant but uninhabited, the expedition declared compliance and established a temporary monitoring station before moving on. But this monitoring station has not been heard from in some time. The nearest expeditionary fleet has been dispatched hunting for suspected Xenos presence. For this world is not known to all as 50735. To the Eldar it is known as a maiden world and they will unleash the dreadful fury of the sword wind on any who dare to trespass upon it even the one men call the Lord of the Red Sands. The battle today is 2,000 points. It is a scenario from the first Horus Heresy supplement. It is onslaught with ambush deployment and the World Eaters will come under attack from the forces of the Eldar. Let's take a look at the armies. This 2000 point World Eaters army is Battleforge and is a Legiones Astartes detachment. It is led by the Primarch of the 12th Legion himself, the Lord of the Red Sands, the Red Angel. It's Angron and we are very much looking forward to seeing what he can do. The other HQ choice is a familiar face. It's Arian, 10,000 years in the past. He's a Codicia, he's Mastery Level 2. He has his trusty four sacks, and doesn't he look young? There are plenty of World Eaters in this detachment. The first troop's choice is a squad of 14 World Eaters. They're a tactical squad. They have bolt pistols, chain axes. They're led by a sergeant with artificer armor and a power fist. And another tactical squad of 14 World Eaters, bolt pistols, chain axes. And they are also led by a sergeant with artificer armor and a power fist. There are two more. Tactical squads as well. There is a tactical squad of 10. They have bolters, they're mounted in a rhino, and a tactical support squad. Five marines, they have four melter guns, and they are also mounted in a rhino. And then the final troops choice is a legion assault squad. Ten of them, they have jump packs, bolt pistols, chain axes, and their sergeant has artificer armor and a power fist. There are also three elite choices in this detachment. The first is a squad of cataphracty terminators. Two of them have twin lightning claws, one has a reaper autocannon and there are also three power fists. The second elite's choice is an apothecarian detachment, two apothecaries, one each attached to these large tactical squads and the final elite's choice is a contemptor dreadnought with two carries, assault cannons and a havoc missile launcher. There are a lot of marines here but we are using Special scenario rules whereby Angron and this section of the army they will be deployed at the start of the game and Arian will be leading this section of the World Eaters force to his Primarch's rescue if Angron could ever be said to need such a thing as rescue. It's a formidable list. Let's see what the Eldar have brought along. This 2000 point Eldar army is unbound but does contain some formations such as the Seer Council who will be leading this army. This Maiden World is obviously of great importance to the Eldar as this Seer Council contains Farseers and Warlocks from Ulthway, Alaytarki, Andan and Samhain. They are here to make sure this world is not polluted by the human presence. There are Three other formations in this army, the first of which is a Dire Avenger Shrine. There are three squads, each of five Dire Avengers, with one led by the Shrine's Exarch. And they all have Ballistic Skill 5, as do the first of the Aspect Hosts, containing six Fire Dragons led by an Exarch, three Dark Reapers led by an Exarch, and five Dark Reapers led by an Exarch. They really could put out some very, very deadly firepower. The other aspect host is the close combat host. 
they have six shining spears led by an exarch, six howling banshees led by an exarch with an executioner, and six striking scorpions led by an exarch with a scorpion's claw. And to carry the sword wind into battle, the Eldar have bought several grav vehicles. Two wave serpents, each with twin linked bright lances. Two falcons, each with star cannon to go with their pulse lasers. And a squadron of three vipers, each with a star cannon. And like the world eaters, this army will be split. This force will be deployed. They are the first wave of aspect warriors taking on the trespassers and the Seer Council will be leading this section of the force as the second wave of the assault. Will it be enough to take out the Lord of the Twelfth Legion? We shall see, but this does look like a list that can put out a lot of firepower and close assault carnage. Moving into deployment. And the armies have deployed and the combination of the ambush deployment map and the onslaught scenario special rules have created an interesting situation right at the start of this battle. In ambush, the defenders, which in this case are the world eaters, have to deploy within 18 inches of the centre point of the table. The Eldar of the attackers may deploy within 12 inches of either of the short table edges to represent them encircling and attacking the defenders. But for onslaught, it is alternating deployment, so one side deploys a unit, then the other deploys a unit, and they must be deployed in a certain order. Lords of War first, then heavy support, then troops, then elites, then headquarters, then fast attack. So the World Eaters, they won the roll off, they decided to deploy first and go first, and they put Angron right in the middle of the table since there were no Eldar deployed. The Eldar responded by deploying a unit of Dark Reapers on this rocky ridge and then the world eaters were free to move on to their troops they placed one legion tactical squad with their apothecary in the monitoring station the Eldar responded by bolstering this firebase with another unit of dark reapers but then the world eaters put down a legion tactical squad very very close to them in this scenario with the defenders being able to deploy within 18 inches of the center point and the attackers 12 inches of the table edge it means that units can start very very close together so right at the start of this battle it looks like Angron has ordered the world eaters to attack very quickly and maybe he has caught the attacking Eldar by surprise the final world eaters unit to be deployed was the cataphracty terminators and elite's choice they have deployed round Angron to give him some protection and the rest of the Eldar they have deployed on this flank to try to protect the now very vulnerable Dark Reapers they have put down another heavy support choice a Falcon it's empty but it does have a lot of firepower and their Viper Squadron with their Star Cannon meanwhile attacking from the other direction towards the monitoring station the whole Dire Avenger Shrine has deployed along with the fire dragons in a falcon so another peculiarity of this scenario is that once the armies have deployed the objectives are deployed there are two each is worth five to the opposing player there are no points available for holding your own objective it must be deployed in your own deployment zone so the world eaters they have put it down right in the midst of this large tactical squad meanwhile the Eldar they feel that they have enough forces here with the Dire Avenger Shrine and the Fire Dragons and the Falcon to take out this tactical squad so they have put their objective here behind one squad of Dire Avengers. The other points available in this scenario are Slay the Warlord and Attrition so you get an extra point for having more units left than your enemy at the end of the battle and there are also points for Onslaught which are a victory point awarded for each unit destroyed in the first game turn which is not always easy as the world eaters deployed first 
the Eldar are desperately hoping they can seize the initiative as the World Eaters are already very close thanks to the ambush deployment map. Let's see if they can do it. If they fail, we will go into World Eaters turn 1. And with the roll of a 3, the Eldar have failed to seize the initiative and this world, known as 50735, echoes to bellows of rage as the World Eaters swarm into the attack. This squad, they got 5 inches of move through cover and it does look like these Dark Reapers may be doomed. Meanwhile, Angron, he's joined the Cataphracti there moving towards this objective. He cares not for objectives though, he is just moving towards the nearest Eldar that he can see. He wants to tear them apart. And the only other World Eaters unit, the other tactical squad, they have moved four inches through the monitoring station and they are going to attempt a charge on the Dark Reapers holding the Eldar's objective. This scenario and the deployment certainly have not been in the Eldar's favour so far. Let's see what happens. There are no psychers on the table yet, so we go straight into World Eaters shooting phase turn one. End of World Eaters shooting phase turn one, and neither this tactical squad moving through the monitoring station, nor the other tactical squad climbing up this rocky ridge have risked shooting. They do not want to make their charges any harder and the World Eaters, they are after onslaught attack victory points for destroying units in the first turn, they think. Their best chance of that is in close assault. The only firing came from the Cataphracti Terminators. They targeted the Viper Squadron and although their combi bolters did nothing, the Reaper Auto Cannon managed to get two penetrating hits knocking one Viper from the air, but they're a squadron that's not a full unit destroyed. So, the crucial phase of World Eaters Turn 1 is upon us. World Eaters Assault Phase Turn 1. End of World Eaters Assault Phase Turn 1 and the 12th Legion have struck in their typical fashion. This tactical squad made it up over the rocks and the three Dark Reapers, they stood no chance. They failed to inflict any casualties on the charging Astartes and were torn to pieces. That earns the World Eaters a point for onslaught attack and they have consolidated towards the nearest enemy. They can hurt as per their Legion special rules. And another good result for the World Eaters in the monitoring station. This tactical squad also made their charge but the Dire Avengers did fight back with a cold fury. First, the World Eaters veteran sergeant who was leading the charge was executed by a pinpoint overwatch shot from the Dire Avenger Exarch, and another brother was pulled down by the rest of the Aspect Warriors. But then, chain axes are very, very effective against Dire Avengers, and they were all torn to pieces. That's another point for Onslaught Attack, and the World Eaters, they have taken the Eldar home objective, they have consolidated one inch again towards the nearest unit they can hurt which happens to be the Falcon containing the Fire Dragons. The World Eaters have opened this battle in typically belligerent style. They have two onslaught points and they have also claimed the enemy objective. If Angron is aware enough to be pleased he surely would be. Let's see how the very surprised Eldar respond going into Eldar Turn 1. End of Eldar movement phase turn 1 and although they are doubtless shocked by the sudden violence inflicted upon them by the World Eaters, they are cunning and they have realised that as usual the World Eaters may have overstretched themselves. This tactical squad is going to find itself taking a lot of fire from the Falcon and the other squad of Dark Reapers and the two Vipers have shifted over slightly to add their Star Cannon and Shuriken Catapult fire as well. Meanwhile, the Aspect Warriors on the other side of the battlefield, they are furious at the death of their comrades and they have sprung into action. The two remaining squads of Dire Avengers from the Shrine, they are moving to shred as many Space Marines as possible with their Avenger Catapults. Meanwhile, the Falcon has moved to get all of its weapons to bear on this tactical squad and it has deployed the fire dragons and they 
Cannot wait to start melting some Space Marines, especially as the nearest Space Marine to them is this squad's Apothecary. So, the Eldar, they look like they are responding well. Their Seer Council has not arrived yet, so there is no Eldar Psychic Phase this turn. We go into Eldar Shooting Phase, turn 1. End of Eldar Shooting Phase, turn 1, and the Eldar have struck back. The Fire Dragons began by targeting this Tactical Squad. They managed to take out the Apothecary and three more World Eaters, and they have battle focused towards the centre of the battlefield. Meanwhile, the Falcon took out one. More Marine with its Dark Cannon, but missed with both of its Pulse Laser shots. The Dire Avengers decided, in retribution for their fallen brothers, they would unleash their Blade Storm, and each one of these squads took out another two Space Marines. That could have been better, but this squad is looking rather weak now. There are only four left, but they have passed morale. The Dire Avengers battle focused into good cover. The World Eaters are still holding this objective though. Still, that was quite effective from the Eldar on this side of the battlefield and it is a similar story with this tactical squad. The Vipers open fire with their Shuriken Catapults and Star Cannon. They took down the Veteran Sergeant and another Marine. The Falcon was not very effective in its firing. It only managed to take down another World Eater and then the Dark Reapers, they took out another four. This squad still has quite a few Marines left and they are within 12 inches of their Sire Angron. They are fearless, but a lot of Marines have gone down in this phase. The World Eaters are looking a little bit thin on the ground. But bad news for the Eldar, their turn one has come to an end. They have failed to wipe out a single unit so they get no points for Onslaught attack. They are going to have to concentrate on the objectives if they wish to achieve victory in this scenario. Let's see if Arian can lead the World Eaters reinforcements to this battlefield going into World Eaters. Turn 2. Start of World Eaters Turn 2 and the Eldar have been given a much needed reprieve. Arian has not arrived nor have the Tactical Squad, the Tactical Support Squad, or the Assault Squad. The only reinforcements that the World Eaters have received this turn is the stomping form of the Contempt to Dreadnought. He has arrived in the ambush deployment. The defenders have the two long edges to move their reserves on from. The attackers have the two short edges. But that's a good result for the Eldar. The Contemptor has decided that this Dire Avenger Shrine needs to be cleared out. He is cycling up his Kerry's Assault Cannons. Let's see what the rest of the World Eaters do going into World Eaters. Turn 2. Movement phase. End of World Eaters movement phase turn 2. And with a 6 inch move through cover this tactical squad is closing in on the second squad of Eldar Dark Reapers. The Dark Reapers have not had a very good time in this scenario. Meanwhile, Angron demonstrates that he cares not for tactical objectives. He has spied the Fire Dragons coming through the monitoring station. He and his Cataphracti have moved towards them as fast as possible. They can't charge this turn, but Angron cannot wait to get to grips with the aliens. And following their size example, these four tactical marines, they have also abandoned the objective they were supposed to be holding. They have spied some dire avengers and they want to tear them apart so the world eaters they are behaving like world eaters let's see if it pays off Arian still hasn't arrived so we have no psychic phase once again we go into world eaters shooting phase turn two end of world eaters shooting phase turn two and the contemptor was very disappointing with its firing the havoc launcher scattered off a huge distance and although it managed eight wounds with its assault cannons the Dire Avengers, they rolled excellently for their cover save. Only two went down, they have passed morale. Three of these World Eaters opened fire with their bolt pistols and had no effect on this squad of Dire Avengers behind this prefab bunker. But one brother hurled a frag grenade and managed to take out two Aspect Warriors. They have also passed morale. The Cataphracti opened fire on the Fire Dragons. They managed a couple of wounds with their Reaper Auto Cannon and their Combi Bolters, but the Fire Dragons made all their armor saves. And 
This tactical squad opened fire with their bolt pistols on. The Dark Reapers are about to charge. They only managed two wounds, but both were two failed. Look out, sirs, and the Dark Reaper Exarch has gone down. So a good result there. But once again, the important phase is upon us. It is World Eater's Assault Phase, turn two. End of World Eater's Assault Phase, turn two, and the few remaining tactical marines did manage to make it into the Dire Avengers. One World Eater was gunned down by the Aspect Warriors Overwatch, but then the three remaining. With Furious Charge and their chain axes, they managed to kill every remaining Aspect Warrior. So a good result there, although there certainly are not many World Eaters down this end of the battlefield now. Meanwhile, this tactical squad also made its charge against the Dark Reapers. It took no damage, but it only managed to take out three of them, and the last Dark Reaper has heroically passed morale. He has tied up this tactical squad. Although that may not be such a good result as it is the Eldar's turn next. We go into Eldar, turn two, and if a lot of their reserves arrive, they could really swing this battle in their favour. Let's see. Start of Eldar, turn two, and there must be something peculiar going on on this planet, as just like the World Eaters, only one of the Eldar reserves has arrived. The Howling Banshees mounted in their Wave Serpent, they have come on, they are sitting right on the Eldar's home objective. And this Wave Serpent has twin linked Bright Lances preparing to give fire against the Contemptor. If the Contemptor goes down and the three Tactical Marines and the World Eaters will really have nothing in the monitoring station end of the battlefield. But the Eldar, they could have used the Scorpions, the Seer Council, and the Shining Spears, none of them have arrived. This is shaping up to be a very interesting battle as each side seems determined to drip feed their reinforcements in. Let's see what the rest of the Eldar do going into Eldar movement phase, turn two. End of Eldar movement phase, turn two, and the Eldar have decided that with the World Eaters reinforcements delayed, now is the time to strike. Over. On this side of the field, the three remaining Dire Avengers, they are hunting the three World Eaters through these woods. And now that they feel the objective is safe in the hands of the Howling Banshees and their Wave Serpent, this Falcon has moved along with the Fire Dragons, they are targeting Angron himself. And they will be joined in their fire by the Vipers, who are moving up from behind, and long range fire also from the Falcon in these woods. The Eldar, they are glad that this Dark Reaper has commended his soul to his craft world. He is going to give his life to hold these Space Marines up while the Eldar strike at the World Eater's command. This could be very interesting. The Seer Council still has not arrived so there is once again no psychic phase. We go straight into Eldar shooting phase Turn two. End of Eldar shooting phase, turn two, and the Dire Avengers, they manage to shoot down a single World Eater, and they have battle focus back behind this wall. The World Eaters have passed morale. Disappointingly, the newly arrived Wave Serpent managed to hit the Contemptor with its twin link Bright Lance, but could not penetrate its armor. And meanwhile, in the center of the battlefield, the Cataphracti, they have done their job. They have saved their sire's life. He probably doesn't appreciate it, but they have done so nonetheless. They made a huge amount of invulnerable saves thanks to their cataphracty plate. Three went down to the combined fire of this Falcon and the Vipers. And long range fire from this Falcon. That left Angron and two Terminators left to face the fire of the dreaded Fire Dragons. Both remaining cataphracty went down and Angron himself was wounded once, but... In their attempt to battle focus away, they rolled a two, and using fleet, they re-rolled and got another two. The fire dragons have left themselves dangerously exposed to something you really do not want to take on in assault. Still, it has been quite an effective phase from the Eldar. They do seem to have clawed this battle back. We have a single ongoing assault, as 
This Dark Reaper prepares to give his life in Eldar Assault Phase, turn 2. End of Eldar Assault Phase, turn 2, and unsurprisingly, the last Dark Reaper was butchered horribly. He did no damage, and sensing the danger to their Primarch, this tactical squad have consolidated 6 inches. They still have to go towards the nearest unit they can hurt, but thankfully that is the Vipers. They are heading in the right direction. So, this battle is still very finely poised. Angron may be unleashed. Let's see if that happens and if Arian turns up. Going into World Eaters, turn 3. Start of World Eaters, turn 3, and it is with much relief that Arian finally arrives on the battlefield and sees that his sire is still standing. He's not particularly surprised by that, but it sets his mind at rest nevertheless. He has come on in his Rhino with a tactical support squad with melter guns. They are preparing to disembark to take out the Howling Banshee's Wave Serpent, and they are supported by the Legion tactical squad with bolters. They have come on in their Rhino as well. The only reserve left that has not yet arrived in the World Eaters army is their assault squad with jump packs. They do not know where they have got to. That could be crucial. They are closing in on the Eldar's objective. Let's see what the rest of the World Eaters do in World Eaters movement phase turn 3. End of World Eaters movement phase turn 3 and pausing to contemptuously laugh off his fusion gun wound. Angron is moving as quickly as he can towards the fire dragons. It does not look like a good time to be a fire dragon. We shall see. It also does not look like a particularly good time to be a viper crewman as this tactical squad of world eaters close in behind them. They have furious charge now so they may well be able to tear through the Eldar grab vehicles. The two remaining world eaters from this tactical squad, they will not give in in their quest to kill the Dire Avengers. They are going to try to take out the last three and that will hopefully allow the Contemptor which has stomped forward to unleash its assault cannon upon some of the Eldar grav tanks that are in the monitoring station. Meanwhile this tactical squad has deployed from its Rhino. They are hoping to have some Howling Banshees to gun down as Arian and the tactical support squad have also deployed from their Rhino. They are going to try to destroy this vehicle with their melter guns. We shall see. It looks like the World Eaters have managed an unusual amount of tactical coordination and we are very much looking forward to the spectacle of Angron doing something. Arian is here, so we have our first psychic phase of the game. World Eaters, psychic phase, turn three. End of World Eaters, psychic phase, turn three. And with a maximum eight dice, Arian decided to unleash his biomancy arsenal on the rear of the Howling Banshee's Wave Serpent. But although he got Smite and Life Leech off successfully, neither power did any damage to the Eldar Grav Tank. So disappointing for the first Psychic Phase. Let's see if the World Eaters can put in a better performance in World Eaters Shooting Phase. Turn 3. End of World Eaters Shooting Phase, Turn 3. And it has been very, very effective. The four Melter Guns in the Tactical Support Squad easily detonated the Banshee's Wave Serpent even though it jinked and two Banshees were killed in the explosion. It was just the opportunity that the tactical squad were waiting for. As the Banshees appeared from the smoke, they gunned down another two and wounded the Exarch. And not being able to resist, the World Eaters Contemptor then opened fire on the Exarch and the one remaining Banshee with its Kerry's Assault Cannons and cut them all to shreds. So, this objective has been thoroughly cleared out by the World Eaters. The two remaining tactical Marines here they managed to take out a Dire Avenger with their bolt pistols. They are preparing to charge and the fire up the other end of the battlefield achieved nothing as this tactical squad opened fire with their bolt pistols and a crack grenade on the Vipers that they are preparing to charge. Still, the Eldar, they have been badly damaged and it may get even worse as we have some assaults and Gron in World Eaters Assault Phase, Turn 3. End of World Eaters Assault Phase, Turn 3, and 
although this tactical squad they made it into the Vipers and they managed lots and lots of hits they only got two glances so only one Viper went down there is still one Viper jet bike left and over in the far corner of the battlefield the two remaining Dire Avengers managed to cut down one World Eater as he charged them with their Avenger catapults but the one remaining World Eater he took two mighty swings with his chain axe and hacked through both remaining aspect warriors. They are wiped out. He is consolidating back into the fray. He cannot get enough. And speaking of people that cannot get enough, Angron, he made his charge. He was wounded by the Fire Dragon's Overwatch, but he leapt the barricades and he hacked down five Fire Dragons easily. In return, the Exarch could do no wounds, but despite needing a 4 to pass his morale check, he has held on a 3. He is a hero of his craft world, but from the World Eater's perspective, maybe it's best Angron remains locked in combat and is not subject to any more of the Eldar shooting. So, even when the result appears to be good for the Eldar, on closer inspection, it seems that Angron is continuing to live a charmed life. The Eldar really don't have much left. They need their reserves desperately. Let's see if they arrive in Eldar. Turn 3. Start of Eldar, turn 3, and thankfully some more of their forces have arrived. The Striking Scorpions in their Wave Serpent have moved on, and next to them the Shining Spears have come. Zipping through the trees, but the Eldar have still seen no sign of their Seer Council. That is quite a blow to the Eldar's hopes. That is a lot of points and a lot of psychic potential that have not yet arrived. And the Eldar have more problems. They have brought their reserves on here because they must stop the World Eaters who have arrived in force from seizing their home objective. If the World Eaters get five points for that, then this game will be beyond the Eldar. If the Eldar, on the other hand, can destroy these World Eaters in the monitoring station, they may, using their speed, have a chance to seize their objective. They can still win this, but it's going to be tricky. Let's see how the Eldar go about achieving this in Eldar movement phase, turn three. End of Eldar movement phase turn 3 and the Falcon Grav Tank that was in the centre of the monitoring station has moved back and has spun around to add its firepower against these Astartes that are putting so much pressure on the Eldar objective which has been retaken by the Eldar as the Striking Scorpions have disembarked from their Wave Serpent. Is the firepower of the Falcon, the Shining Spears, the newly deployed Scorpions and their Wave Serpent enough to drive the Space Marines back, we shall see the Fire Dragon Exarch, he is preparing for the end, he's still locked in combat with the Red Angel and over at the far end of the battlefield the Eldar are relying on their Grav Vehicles to hold this objective and to destroy the World Eaters over this side the Falcon has moved forward and taken up a good fine position on this rocky rise the nimble Viper has escaped the clutches of the World Eaters tactical squad and it has taken this objective. It's going to add the fire of its weaponry as well. Maybe that will be enough to drive away these World Eaters. This game is finely balanced. With no Seer Council still, there is no Eldar Psychic phase. So we go into Eldar Shooting phase, turn 3. End of Eldar Shooting phase, turn 3 and it is disappointing for the Eldar. The Shining Spears open well. They took out three of this tactical squad with a volley from their twin link Shuriken catapults but the Falcon only managed one wound with its Star Cannon and the World Eater in question made his cover save and then missed with both of his pulse laser shots. The Scorpions, they opened fire with their Shuriken pistols and did nothing to Arian and his squad. Neither did the Twin Link Bright Lance on the Wave Serpent and in desperation the Wave Serpent has unleashed its Serpent Shield but that has only taken out one Melter Gun carrying member of Arian's squad and with Angron within 12 inches this squad is fearless so it looks like the Eldar counter-attack has failed to drive the World Eaters back. Meanwhile 
down the other end of the battlefield. The Viper managed to take out one Space Marine with a blast from its Star Cannon and the Falcon has taken out two more, one with its Pulse Laser and one with its Star Cannon but this squad, although much reduced in number, they have held morale and their Apothecary is still with them. So, disappointments throughout this phase for the Eldar really and the Eldar cannot launch an assault with these forces, they have arrived from reserve. There is just the ongoing assault. Surely this will be the end of the Fire Dragon's Exarch in Eldar Assault Phase, Turn 3. End of Eldar Assault Phase, Turn 3, and there was only going to be one winner here. The Exarch was butchered horribly by a madly cackling Primarch, and he has headed off towards the nearest thing he can hurt, which is always everything, but in this case it is a Falcon Grav tank. That turn has done very little to improve the Eldar's prospects. Let's see if the World Eaters can perform the death blow and if their last reserves arrive going into World Eaters turn 4. Start of World Eaters turn 4 and their last reserve has come on it is their assault squad they have leapt on using their jump packs and the World Eaters are opening that between them and the surviving tactical Marines. They can hold this objective against the Eldar, giving them no chance to get back into this game. We shall see. Let's see what the rest of the World Eaters do in World Eaters movement phase, turn four. End of World Eaters movement phase, turn four. And once again with a maddened laugh, Angron has shrugged off another fusion gun wound. He is unstoppable and he has barged his way through the outskirts of the monitoring station. He is going to tear this Falcon to pieces. Seeing their sire stride towards the aliens, the rest of the World Eaters are also moving forwards. This tactical squad, they are moving to take out the Striking Scorpions with a hail of Boltify, they have been joined by Arian. Meanwhile, Arian has sent the remaining members of the Tactical Support Squad with Melter Guns to take out the now shieldless Striking Scorpions Wave Serpent. To the rear, this last Tactical Marine, he is looking to do a sneaky charge onto the Shining Spears. And why not? But before he can do that, the Contemptor will be hosing them liberally with fire from his twin Kerry's assault cannons. Even the Rhinos over here have moved up to open fire on the Scorpions. Angron wants all of these Eldar dead. Meanwhile, almost a separate battle down the other end of the battlefield. The Apothecary, he has led the four remaining tactical marines six inches through cover. They are going to try to once again scale this rocky outcrop, this time their target is a falcon. They have furious charge. Maybe they can tear it apart with their chain axes. They are relying on the newly arrived assault squad to deal with the viper, although they won't be able to do that this turn. It is looking like the world eaters have this battle fully under control, due in no small part to Angron smashing his way through this monitoring station. Let's see if Arian can have a better Psychic Phase than last turn in World Eaters Psychic Phase Turn 4. End of World Eaters Psychic Phase Turn 4 and Arian once again has utilised his favourite two powers. He first summoned up Smite and managed to wound the Striking Scorpion Exarch and then he called upon Life Leech but somehow the Eldar managed to deny it. So not much happening. In the Psychic Phase, let's see what happens in World Eaters Shooting Phase, Turn 4. End of World Eaters Shooting Phase, Turn 4, and the Legion Tactical Squad open fire on the Striking Scorpions. With their bolt guns, they manage to finish off the wounded Exarch and take out another Aspect Warrior. And one more Scorpion was shot down by the Rhinos Combi Bolters as they move up in close support. But other than that, the firing on this side of the battlefield was very ineffective from the World Eaters. Only one Melter Gun from the Tactical Support Squad hit the Wave Serpent. It was only a glance and the Wave Serpent made its cover save, so no damage there. And despite unleashing its Kerry's Assault Cannons on the Shining Spears, only one 
jet biker went down as the contemptor rolled very badly with its firing. This marine did nothing as he tossed a crack grenade and prepares to charge and that is about it from this side. Over on the other side around the other objective this tactical squad had some success as they chucked a crack grenade up at this falcon and managed to do a glancing hit. Meanwhile the assault squad have just run forward. They are going to try to prevent the Eldar from taking this objective. We have some assaults. This tactical squad are going to try to take out this falcon while their sire tries to take out this falcon. And this marine may charge into the rear of the Shining Spears. Attrition is a rule in this scenario, but hey, we are the World Eaters. Let's see World Eaters Assault Phase Turn 4. End of World Eaters Assault Phase Turn 4 and this tactical squad have once again demonstrated themselves to be incredibly vicious. They charged up the Rocky Rise, yet again they succeeded in their charge roll over difficult terrain and they inflicted 7 hole points on this Falcon, well and truly wrecking it, which we thought was very impressive until Angron ploughed into the falcon in the centre of the monitoring station single-handedly inflicting eight penetrating hits. Needless to say the old R vehicle was blown sky high but did no damage with its explosion and the valiant attempt by the last World Eater Tactical Marine to tie the Shining Spears up and stop them from charging ended in failure as they inflicted the one wound they needed to take him out with their overwatch so, one piece of disappointment in an otherwise very effective phase. The Eldar, they really are struggling. They have very few units left, but at least they can count on the arrival of their Seer Council in Eldar, turn four. Start of Eldar, turn four, and the Seer Council has arrived, and they are... Shocked and deeply saddened to see a scene of such carnage brought to their fair maiden world. But they are undaunted, they have a plan to achieve victory. The first part of which is for them to use their formidable psychic might to destroy all of the interloping humans on this side of the battlefield, allowing the Viper to seize the objective. But for that plan to work, the Eldar are going to have to rely on their forces over here in the monitoring station to drive away these world eaters and perhaps it's unlikely but they will also have to deal with the Lord of the Red Sands himself. Let's see how they go about it. Eldar movement phase turn 4. End of Eldar movement phase turn 4 and the Viper it is holding this objective and it's going to give fire it can't take out all these world eaters on its own, it needs the psychic might of the seers which should be coming shortly meanwhile it is desperate stuff for the Eldar in the monitoring station they can't leave Angron here they can't allow him to pick his targets and charge so the shining spears they're taking a deep breath and they are preparing to assault him first they will give him a volley from their laser lances maybe the aspect warriors can finally take out the Red Angel. Meanwhile the three remaining Strike and Scorpions, they are moving around to take on the four members of the Tactical Support Squad. They're going to need some luck there and this Wave Serpent is just going to try to take out as many of these Tactical Marines as possible. The Eldar don't have enough units to deal with all the targets down here in the monitoring station but they're having to prioritise maybe if they have some success the surviving Forces can take out the units they cannot tackle this turn. We shall see. Of course, the Contemptor is still stomping up behind them. It's difficult stuff for the Eldar. First, they have to put their plan into action, and the first part of that plan is a dominant psychic phase. Eldar psychic phase, their first psychic phase, but in Eldar turn four. End of Eldar psychic phase turn four, and with a huge number of dice. The Seer Council were adamant that the pathetic human Psyche was not going to be able to deny any of their power, so they focused on casting two. Firstly, a Latok Farseer unleashed a Psychic Shriek, which took out three members of this squad, including the Apothecary. There's only two Marines left there now, so a good result for the Eldar. And then the Ulthway 
Farseer managed to summon up a warp charge for Eldritch Storm, although he actually managed about eight successes, we think. Fortunately for the World Eaters Assault Squad, it scattered slightly and only tore four of them apart. They have passed morale, they're not pinned, so... Although it took the Eldar a Herculean effort to get that power off, it only took out four of the Assault Squad. We don't think that's enough. Still, if the Eldar can continue with this kind of psychic dominance, it could perhaps tip things in their favour. We shall see. First, we go into Eldar shooting phase, turn four. End of Eldar shooting phase, turn four, and the Viper was very unfortunate targeting the assault squad. The one wound it inflicted with Shriek and Catapults was saved, and it missed with both of its star cannon shots. So, the Eldar, they have not achieved all they hoped in taking this objective. Meanwhile, the Shining Spears have done well against the Lord of the Red Sands. They wounded him once with their laser lances, and the two Shining Spears that were out of range with their lances open fire with their Shrieking Catapults managed to cause another wound. Sensing a potential devastating blow, the Wave Serpent also added the fire of its Bright Lances and Shrieking Catapults, but Angron, who was wounded once by the Bright Lance, he made his invulnerable save. This charge coming up, the Shining Spears against Angron, could be very, very close. They have every chance of taking him out. That would be an upset. Meanwhile, the three striking scorpions open fire on the tactical support squad with their shuriken pistols. They have shot down one as they prepare to charge the three survivors. Can the Eldar do it? If they can take out Angron, it really will turn this battle on its head. But then, many have tried. Let's see Eldar Assault Phase, turn four. End of Eldar Assault Phase, turn four. And as the Shining Spears dip their lances to dive through the bank of smoke, they were horrified to see a huge, screaming, angry form leaping through the bank of smoke at them. They failed to appreciate that Angron, with his initiative of seven, would strike before them, and he duly butchered them all, including the Exarch, before they could even point their laser lances at him. He is truly the Lord of the Red Sands. That was a devastating blow to the Eldar hopes of victory. In this scenario, even with some of the best close combat units in any codex, it's probably advisable not to charge against the Red Angel. Never mind. And in other news, the three striking scorpions, they successfully charged the tactical support squad, but neither side has managed to do any damage to the other. They remain locked. Angron really has grabbed this battle by the scruff of the neck. He is now closing in after his consolidation on the wave serpent. There doesn't seem to be much the old I have left. Let's see what the World Eaters do going into World Eaters turn five. End of World Eaters movement phase, turn five, and this is just twisting the knife on the Eldar as Angron has once again decided that another of his hideous wounds does not bother him. He has got yet another one back, thanks to it will not die, and he is moving to destroy this wave serpent. Meanwhile, Arian is leading this Legion tactical squad through the smoke. They are going to overwhelm the striking scorpion, surely. Seeing that their Primarch and their Psyker, along with their brothers, have this well under control, the Rhinos have begun to move through the base. The Contemptor is stomping forwards past this section of the base, and he has brought his Kerry's Assault Cannons into range of the Viper, holding this objective. Surely that's enough firepower to deal with the Eldar Light Skimmer, and... The World Eaters here, they are maddened by battle. They are moving towards the Seer Council. They just want to tear the aliens to pieces, but they've got difficult charges through this broken terrain. So, it looks like the World Eaters are triumphant. We shall see. First we have World Eaters Psychic Phase Turn 5. Surely the Seer Council can shut down Arian. Let's see. 
and world leader psychic face turn five and sensing the immense psychic presence of the seer council arian decided to throw all of his dice into getting iron arm off on himself he succeeded with three warp charges but the elder they threw all their dice into denying it and were successful five times the seer council are dominant in the psychic phase at least let's see if the world eaters can do a bit better in world eater shooting phase turn five end of world leader shooting phase turn five and a hail of bolt pistol fire from the tactical squad and the assault squad had no effect at all on the seer council but despite it vainly trying to jink this viper was knocked out of the air by a hail of shots from the contemptor dreadnought the rhinos they have moved flat out through the base just for something to do and down this end it is all about vicious assaults no shooting at all but we now go into World Eaters Assault Phase Turn 5 End of World Eaters Assault Phase Turn 5 and the Seer Council are relieved that neither the World Eaters Assault Squad nor the Tactical Squad managed to cover this broken ground to get them in an assault. They opened fire with their Shuriken pistols on Overwatch but did no damage either. But down this end of the battlefield in the monitoring station there are no aliens left alive. Arian led the tactical squad into the striking scorpions in support of the tactical support squad and the weight of attacks dragged them all down. The scorpions did not manage to take out any marines either and unsurprisingly Angron ploughed into the wave serpent blowing it sky high. It is all Imperial forces at this end of the battlefield and the only Eldar unit left are their extremely late arriving Seer Council as the World Eaters have five points for holding this objective. They got two for Onslaught attack in the first turn and they've also won Attrition. They have eight points. The Eldar cannot hope to come back from here so the Seers, much as it pains them, have decided to abandon this maiden world to the disgusting humans. The final score in this battle is eight points to the World Eaters and nothing to the Eldar. They have scored zero. The scenario, especially the deployment and the fact that the World Eaters could go first while being so near to the attacking Eldar, really put them on the back foot right from the beginning. And nothing that they threw at the Red Angel has slowed him down. He has been a force of destruction unsurprisingly as that is what he is known for this has been a great battle we love this world eaters list and particularly angron he is immense fun to use thanks very much for watching we hope you've enjoyed this battle please subscribe to our channel and we will keep producing as many warhammer 40,000 battle reports as we can see ya